So the first thing I'm gonna show you guys is the app tray on the TU7000. At the bottom here, you see all these different applications and these are applications that you might've downloaded. Now, one thing you can do if you wanna move the application, just press and hold down on the center of the remote control and you can remove it or you can move it anywhere you want and let it go. Now, if you look at your remote control, you do have a picture of a house and that takes you to your main screen. And on here, you will see some promotion as well as the Samsung account that you logged in, any notification and some privacy terms and conditions. If you go over a couple more, then you have the App Store. Now, one thing about the App Store, if you go to the top, you can see that I'm logged into a demo. And if you press on it, you can view your account, you can sign in with a different login, or you can create a brand new account using the application on your smartphone. And all you would do is just take your phone and scan this QR code It'll take you over to Samsung website where you can go ahead and create your account. Next, you have a application search and you have a settings. Now, I know some of these applications you might not want on the television, but you can see the only option you have is to reinstall them, but you can't remove some of the factory applications that's in the television. Now, if you go through this list, see reinstall is the only option you get. But if you do want to clean up your TV, just go through some of these different applications and just see if you can remove applications that you don't need. Now, we'll tell you for a fact that anything that you actually download, you can remove those with no problems. Now, taking a further look at the App Store, if we go down, we have some different apps that you can try for free. You have Editor's Choice, and if you go down to the bottom, you have these different genres, like radio and music, and that could be Spotify or Apple Music. Time to Kill. This is the Smart View enabled for mobile devices from Samsung news and weather. So these are all the different options that you get. Next on the application tray, you have a search. And with this search, you can look for any type of applications that are available in the television. And I will tell you that some items like this is free, where when you see something like VOD as video on demand, these may be connected to an application that you had to pay for. Next, we have sources. And this will show everything plugged in. As you can see, I have a PS5 on it. If you arrow up, you can edit. And this is where you can give it a different name if you like to. I'm gonna leave it just the way it is. I do have a video server. This is my ATSC 2.2 network uh, adapter. And you can see there's a PC, connection guide, and universe remote. And the great thing about this remote control is that it used CEC. And CEC is gonna allow the HDMI connection to program the remote control without having to uh, have any kind of code or anything. Next, we have settings. If you press on it, you go to the main settings, which we'll do in just a minute. But if you go up, you have an e-manual. And the first thing you see is device care. And this can check for any kind of issues you have with the TV. You have a troubleshooting guide. You have a, a first-time use, so it walks you through some of the different things you might want to know accessibility, and you have frequent asked questions. You also can type in a question at the top. You can see topics that you looked at before, and you can see a site map that shows you all the different options that are available inside of this e-manual. Next, it shows you your Wi-Fi connection, and you can instantly go to your network settings in case you want to change your Wi-Fi. You have your uh, different picture modes, and right now it's set to gaming because of the PS5, but if I turn that off, you can see you get other options like standard, natural, movie, filmmakers mode, dynamic, back to standard. You also get that option for your audio system. You can also change your sound outputs. Right now it's on TV speakers, but you can then switch over to fiber optic. If you do have a HDMI soundbar into it, you can also switch over to that. Over here you have closed caption and a sleep timer, your color profiles, auto clarity, and a few other options right there. Now, if we go back down to the settings and press the center on the remote control, then we go into the actual settings. Inside of here, the first thing you have is picture mode. And I just showed you all the options for that as well. Next, you have your picture size. So in certain situations, you can actually take a letterbox TV program and make it widescreen. So you can see custom and you can zoom and uh, do a few other features like that. Under expert settings, this is where you can go in and tweak the TV out just a little bit more. You have your brightness, contrast, sharpness. Um, you can also apply that color profile to all your sources, or you can just use it to the current source, like for example, the PlayStation. 
You can also go in here and do a contrast enhancer. So that's going to make it a little bit darker as far as uh, your black levels. Under field mode, if you're using the tuner built in, you might be able to clean some things up with that. You have color tone, white balance, and these are all professional settings that you probably shouldn't mess with, but you could if you want to. Now, if you go down to the bottom, you can reset the picture back to the way it came out of the box, just in case you make a mistake. Under sound settings, you can see there's a TV speaker. You also have amplified. I just showed you guys those settings. And if you go under expert setting, you can balance everything. On certain inputs, you also have an option for EQ. If you want to get a Adobe Atmos pass-through, you can then enable HDMI eARC or set to auto. And for digital output, this is so you can switch from auto to PCM. And that really depends on the programming that you plan. Now, if you're getting some delay uh, off any of the digital signals, you can change the timing of it. You can see there's the Adobe Atmos. And again, that's going through HDMI. Auto volume, and that's for those loud commercials. Uh, sound feedback is whenever you hear all the little beeps, whenever you're hitting things on, but I have the volume down. And you can reset the sound at the bottom. Now, over here, you have broadcast, but the interesting thing is you have to hit the home button and go back to Samsung TV Plus. Once you actually engage that, then you can see all the different options. So if I press on that and then press on the center, you can see you can broadcast. This is where you can program for different stations. And I do have antenna plugged into it. And you will start the programming right there. You also can put different ratings on it for parental controls. Next on the list, we have general, and then you have features for accessibility. And this is where you can have the TV to talk as you go through the menu for the hearing impaired. You can adjust your closed caption. You can learn the remote control to different features. You also can turn off the picture. So if you just want to hear sound, just hit that button and the TV screen will turn off temporary. And you have high contrast and a few other options down here at the bottom. Next, we have network. And inside of here is where you can actually change your uh, Wi-Fi connection as well as reset everything or uh, hook up a wired connection like an ethernet cable. Under system management, this is where you can set your time and date, but a lot of times it's automatic if you have internet connected to it. You can change your language right here. And these are all the different languages that is available in this particular region television. Here we have your Samsung account. You also can rename the television. So if you don't want that name, you can just change it to anything you like. You also can put a PIN number on it. So if you're worried about someone buying apps or anything like that, if you have your credit card on file, you can change that to anything you like. And down here at the bottom, this is how you can switch from uh, store mode to home note mode if you wanna see what the TV can really do, like what you see in the store. You just hit the four zeros, toggle to retail, give it a second, and it'll start displaying those demos. Next, we have exchange device management. Under here, you can able or disable the CEC, and that's great for sound bars that are connected to it or gaming consoles. That's gonna allow you to control it with the TV remote control. Under external device management, you can control the CEC, so you can control like your PlayStation or anything plugged into the television. And we have a gaming mode, so this is where you can turn it off and on. You have input signal plus, so if you are running a 4K device into it, you wanna make sure that you have this box switched on so it gives you the best performance out of that. Now, once you have certain HDMI inputs, you can control the black level. And then you have input device management. Since this TV does have Bluetooth, you can go over here and you can connect headphones to it as well as controllers like for gaming on the TV. You can do keyboard inputs as well as mouse settings. So you can use the internet on this TV to do all these different functions. Next, we have device connection manager. And under here, you can actually uh, be notified when a smartphone is trying to connect to the TV. And then over here, we have the device list. So this will show a list of everything that's connected to the TV. As you can see, I haven't connected anything to it. Next on the list, we have Apple AirPlay. You can send any iPhone device that's on Wi-Fi over to the television. Now this TV doesn't have Apple HomeKit, so you cannot connect it to uh, your smart home. But again, if you have a Apple device, computer, iPad, you can actually find a TV, put in a code and start using it. Next, we have power and energy savings. So if you don't want the TV to dim itself automatically, make sure this is turned off. You also have all these different brightness reduction, screen savers, and you can have it turned off at a certain time. But I will tell you on screen savers, you cannot upload your own screen saver. It's just a built-in Samsung one. Next, we have smart features. So 
if these boxes are checked, as soon as you turn your TV on, it'll automatically load up the hub or the last application that you used. And at the bottom of it, this is where we can factory reset the, the whole TV. You just go in here, put in four zeros, and this is great if you're selling the TV, it'll make it easy to get rid of all your information off of it. Now last we have support, and this is where you can do software updates. You also can do some troubleshooting like I showed you guys earlier, as well as the e-management. You have device care like I showed you earlier, where you can diagnose the TV. That's where you go back to the online instructions. And then you have remote management. So if, for example, if Samsung needs to log into the TV, you can enable that. And then about this TV just shows you all the specs on it. And then at the bottom here, we have terms and privacy. The next thing I want to show you real quick is the Samsung TV Plus, so you can see what the on-screen guide looks like. I do have an over-the-air antenna plugged in, and the way this is set up is the first lineup of channels are what you find from over-the-air. You'll hit a point where you go to Samsung Streaming, and the way to tell it is that you go from the circle icons over to that Samsung icon. So if you look at this, it's that blue and orange icon on the side. And this tells you, tells you what's on. If you press and hold down something, it'll go right to it. But let's say if you want to see something in the future, you go to it, press and hold it, and you can have scheduled viewing. And what this will do is whenever that program comes on, you'll get a pop-up on your screen to see if you want to watch it. But this TV doesn't have a DVR in it. And this is what it looks like on the screen, as you can see right there. It looks like a little clocked to let you know that that's ready to go. And as I showed you guys earlier, this TV has all kinds of features. Like you have a gallery, so if you plug in a thumb drive into the back of the television, through the USB. Now I'm not sure if it's still active, but if you use the gallery, then you can have pictures to load up from your smart device using the cloud. Now each login on the television will have a privacy, but I wouldn't recommend you putting that on the main TV that everybody's going to use. Next we have an internet browser. And keep in mind, you can take a keyboard and mouse, plug it into a TV, but if you don't have that, you can just use this remote control, but it's just cumbersome. So you can see I'm just pressing the hold down the side. I can move around. I can go up to the top here. And uh, when I press on like a search bar, it'll pop up the keyboard on the screen so you can type in websites. Now I will tell you, I haven't tried this on movies online. I'll just recommend if you're gonna watch movies, you probably wanna use the built-in app system or get an external device. And the, last, uh, and the last option, if you press down from your main screen, this will show you all kinds of information that you can do on TV, like applications that you can buy movies. It'll show you, um, again, popular searches that other people are using, recently added movies. And again, some of these are paid, some of them are free with commercials. So that gives you an idea of how this operating system works. So I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this video. I'm Tech Steve. Thanks a lot for watching. Tech Steve.